السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأتم التسليم على سيدنا ونبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين اللهم رب شرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل العقدة من لساني يفقه قولي رب زدني علما رب يسر ولا تعسر وتم بالخير ثم أما بعد والحمد لله Respected brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners الحمد لله Allah Azza wa Jal has once again enabled us to join this lesson of Tartil and Tafsir live from here in Darul Ummah. Alhamdulillah. This is our Wednesday class, which is called Tartil and Tafsir, in which we practice to recite parts of the Quran and also try to understand the meaning of the, of these ayat of the ayat that we practice. Insha'Allah, Azza wa Jal. This has been an ongoing class for a long time. Alhamdulillah. And last week we uh, resumed our classes after Ramadan and we gave a small introduction into where we are at the moment and you know that we are now in Surah Al-Qiyamah which is in the 29th dose of the Quran which is the 75th um, which is uh, the Surah Al-Qiyamah is the 75th Surah in the Holy Quran uh, Allah Azza wa Jal says in this Surah A'udhu Billahi Minash Shaitan Ar-Rajim Bismillah Ar-Rahman Ar-Rahim I will recite the first ayat as I did uh, last week and inshallah we'll take it from there. Allah says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim La uqsimu bi yawmil qiyamah wa la uqsimu bi nafsi lawamah أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع عظامه بلا قادرين على أن نسوي بنانه بل يريد الإنسان ليفجر أمامه يسأل أيان يوم القيامة فإذا برق البصر وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وزر إلى ربك يومئذ المستقر ينبأ الإنسان يومئذ بما قدم وأخر بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة ولو ألقى معاذيرة صدق الله العظيم We started this surah last week, alhamdulillah And as is the norm, we normally practice the ayat of the surah first And then we go into the translation of it And so, uh, inshallah, we we will do that towards the end, inshallah, the practicing of it First we'll try to translate the ayat that we're on So this surah, like many other surah, speak about the Qiyamah And there are many surahs in the Qur'an And many places in the Holy Qur'an Where Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about the Yawm Al-Qiyamah And there are some, or many many surahs Which are named after the Qiyamah itself from them, for example, is Surah Al-Qiyamah that we are on now. Uh, from them also is Surah uh, that we'll practice, inshallah, we'll practice before is also Surah Al-Qari'ah, uh, Surah Al-Waqi'ah, Surah Al-Haqqah that we've already practiced before, Surah Al-Zalzala, you know, إِذَا زُلْزِلَةِ الْأَرْضُ زِلْزَالَهَا Surah Al-Ghashiyah, Surah Al-Inshiqaq, Surah إِذَا الشَّمْسُ كُوِّرَتْ which is Surah Al-Takweer, Surat Ida Sama on Fatarat, Surat Al Infitar. Um, and then also uh, Allah Azza speaks about Surat Al Diqiyama in the beginning of Surat Al Naba, you know, Amma Tisa'arun Ani Naba Il Azim, the Naba, the great news or the Qiyama itself. Hashar is also one of the names of Qiyama. And uh, the Dukhan is also speaking about the Qiyamah as well. So there are many surahs in the Quran which speak about the Qiyamah and La Uqsum Biyawm Al Qiyamah is in fact one of those surahs which are named after the Qiyamah. We said last time inshallah we'll speak in some detail about what the Qiyamah is all about. Just to translate the first few ayat Allah says La Uqsum Biyawm Al Qiyamah that I, I swear and I take an oath by Biyawm Al Qiyamah by the day of Al Qiyamah. 
Qiyama is connected to Qama, which means to stand. And from the many reasons why it is called Yawm al Qiyama is because it is a day of long standing in front of Allah Azza Jal, where everyone will be standing for a long time for their judgment. Also, they will be standing to be judged. They will be standing as witnesses over themselves and for or against others. Uh, it's a day where you know the justice will be established, where the mizan will also be established. It is also a day on which um, uh, on which Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, when when it's is to do with a long standing in front of Allah Azza Yawm Al Qiyama. فَإِذَا هُمْ قِيَامٌ يَنْظُرُونَ as Allah says in the Quran that there will be qiyam standing yanzurun looking forth and looking forward towards Allah Azza wa Jal. So لا أقسم بيوم القيامة I take an oath and I swear by the day of standing or the day of judgment. Um, Allah Azza wa Jal taking an oath by this day indicates to us the importance of this day of course. Uh, Allah Azza wa Jal taking an oath by this day also indicates the importance of what's about to be said after the oath itself. So the oath being taken by Qiyama is an indication of the Qiyama itself, the importance of Qiyama itself and also the discussion that will follow. So لا أقسم بيوم القيامة Allah is taking an oath. Because Allah Azza wa Jal doesn't need to take an oath, does he? Because Allah Azza wa Jal, everything he says is haq and in fact he is al-haq. And Yawm al-Qiyamah is the day of the haq as is we studied in Surah Al-Haqqa. It is the day of truth and, and everything being clear and apparent on that day. And so Allah doesn't have to take an oath for us to believe something. In fact, Allah takes an oath for our benefit, for our benefit, because it is something that will allow for us to draw more attention and to be more serious about this Qiyamah. And so therefore this Qasam that Allah doesn't need to take and yet Allah does choose to take is for our own benefit to show that this is something very extraordinary, extremely important. And then Allah says, وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّوَّامَ And I take an oath by the nafs, the soul, اللَّوَّامَ The regretful soul. And nafs اللَّوَّامَ Okay, is of course we say, the ulama say the nafs اللَّوَّامَ nafsul الْمُطْمَئِنَّ النَّفْسُ الْأَمَّارَ بِالسُّوءِ uh, uh, you know, these are the different types of nufus, the regretful soul and, and the mutma'in, ya ayatuhan nafsul mutma'in, as mentioned in the Quran. And nafsul ammara bisu is the one, so the, the most, the best type of soul or the spirit is the one that's content with the commands of Allah and is continuously fulfilling Allah's commands and is, uh, is, is racing and computing to become better and better. Uh, and then the next grade down with the nafsul lawama, which is the uh, the regretful soul which sins and then corrects and then sins and then corrects and nafsul ammara bisu is the one that would be uh, continuously sinning um, and continuously commanding its its body or its person to continue sinning but here wala aqsum nafsul lawama as the mufassirun have explained it means the day upon which everyone will be regretful over something Okay, and in fact, the day of judgment is a day of regret for everybody. Um, you know, regret for, of course, the kuffar and the mushrikeen and those who have disobeyed Allah completely and discarded and disregarded the religion completely. Their regret will be very, very immense because it's a day when they will find out that there is no hope for them and they are to be punished eternally. As for well, may Allah give us the ability. Uh, to die as Muslims and give da'wah to as many people as possible towards the Islam and towards Tawheed and towards the oneness of Allah and towards believing in Islam so that we can all have hope to be in the mercy of Allah Azza wa Jal. Uh, but people will be regretful, even a practicing person may be regretful because of uh, because he would have wanted to do more to 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 become more close to Allah, like the Shaheed would want to become, you know, to be brought back so they can die again, so they can get more reward. As Allah says in Surah Al-Munafiqoon أَنْفِقُوا مَا رَزَّقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ يَوْمُ When Allah Azza wa Jal says towards the end of Surah Al-Munafiqoon that فَيَقُولَ رَبِّ لَوْ لَا أَخَّرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَّدَّقَ وَأَكُمْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ And other ayat which indicate that a person will be regretful وَأَنْذِرْهُمْ يَوْمَ الْحَسْرَ A day of regret, an extreme regret and so uh, the Qiyamah has many, many aspects to it. And 
as many many names indicating to those aspects of Yawm al Qiyamah. We've said that many surahs are called after the Qiyamah itself, uh, like the Ghashi and Taqweer and Infitar and, and Al Qiyamah and Zalzala and etc. But there are also other names or other aspects or other ways that Allah refers to the Yawm al Qiyamah in the Quran. And the Arabic language is a principle that if something has got many many names, then it shows the importance of that thing. So, for example, the best example is Allah Azza wa Jal Himself. Allah has got so many names, you know. Wallillahi al-Asma al-Husna, fadhuhu biha. Allah has beautiful names, and He's got 99 names that we know: Ar-Rahman, Ar-Rahim, Al-Malik, Al-Qudus, and onwards. And so this indicates the beauty of Allah, the Allah's how magnificent Allah, Allah is, and etc. So there are many ways that Allah Azza wa Jal speaks about on about Yom Al Qiyamah. And from them is that it's a day of regret, regret for everybody. And so, therefore, what does it mean to me in this life or in this lesson? It means that we should never ever feel content with our good deeds. We should feel that we need to carry on as Allah told the Prophet Sallallahu that وَعْبُدُ رَبَّكَ حَتَّى يَأْتِيَكَ الْيَقِينَ Continue to worship your Lord until yaqeen or death comes to you. And so we can never feel, you know, um, complacent or relaxed and think that, you know what, I'm done um, and I've done enough. And, you know, that's not how a mu'min behaves. In fact, even the Sahaba who were the Ashar al-Mubashirin bil Jannah, 10 guaranteed paradise, even though they were guaranteed paradise, they continue to worship Allah even more. And then the, the you know others around them, and so our ibadah does not stop until we meet our Lord, and so therefore, uh, you know we don't want to be those who regret immensely, even though everyone will be regretful. We want to be uh, of minimal regret, and so we continue to strive and 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 persevere and compete with one another. Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ جَنَّةٍ إِلَى وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَسَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ وَجَنَّةٍ عَرْضُهَا السَّمَاوَاتُ وَالْأَرْضِ That you know, race towards the forgiveness of your Lord and the Jannah, the width of which is the heavens and the earth. سَابِقُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةٍ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And various other, or these ayat indicating that we should compete and, and race with one another for good deeds so that we don't be وَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِالنَّفْسِ اللَّهُ وَمَدِي Or our regret is minimal. Here we should mention that there are, like I said, many aspects of Qiyamah and Allah speaks about the Qiyamah in many different ways in, uh, in the Qur'an. Um, and so we learn, for example, that Allah speaks about Yawm Al-Qiyamah is of course a very prominent and common name uh, of the Day of Judgment. Okay, we says, Yawm Al-Hasra wa anbirhum Yawm Al-Hasrati idh qudiyya al-amru wa fi ghaflati wa hum the Day of Regrets so Qiyamah, la aqsumi al-Qiyamah, and Lawama or hasra means extreme regret. So yawm al-qiyamah, yawm al-hasra, you know, it's also called at-tamma, fa'idha jaati at-tamma al-kubra, fa'idha jaati al-sakha, in surah al-abad, surah al-abad, and surah al-nazi'at, surah al-qari'ah, as we've studied before, and we will inshallah again. Um, as we've said, also Allah refers to it as the ghashiyah, Allah refers to it as waqi'ah, the occurrence. Um, Allah also describes um, the Yawm Al-Qiyamah from the many names of Yawm Al-Qiyamah is also um, Yawm Al-Azifa Yawm Al-Azifa uh, Yawm Al-Ba'th Yawm Al-Taghabun Yawm Al-Talaq um, uh, Yawm Al-Talaq Yawm Hum Barizun La Yaghfa Ala Allah Min Mushay Yawm Al-Tanad okay. Yawm Al-Jam' is also another name Yawm Al-Khuruj Yawm Al-Hisab Yawm Al-Din um, Yawm Al-Khulud um, Yawm al-Fasl, uh, al-Sa'a is also another name referring to the hour, meaning referring to the Qiyamah. And there are many names of Yawm al-Qiyamah. Again, all of these indicating the importance and the different aspects. Because in Arabic, every synonym has its own connotation. So it's not exa- even though it's a name for the same thing, it doesn't mean exactly the same thing. So when, when we study the 99 names of Allah, for example, they are 99 names of the same Allah, of course. But each one tells us something unique and amazing about Allah Azza wa Jal. Rahman says one thing, Rahim says another, and Hay says one another, 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 and Qayyum says another, and Wadud, and Mannan, and Hanan. They are all unique in their own meanings. So Allah is saying, لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة And I take an oath by the nafs, the soul, which will be the regretful one. أَيَحْسَبُ الْإِنسَانُ أَلَّا النَّجْمَعَ عِظَامًا Which means, does a person think that Allah Azza wa Jal will not gather his bones? 
Because as we know, the mushrikeen would say, uh, as Allah quoted in Surah Yasin, وَضَرَبَ لَنَا مَثَلًا وَنَسِيَ خَلْقًا قَالَ مَنْ يُحِي الْعِظَامَ وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ They used to say, or he would say, the mushrikeen would say, مَنْ يُحِي الْعِظَامَ Who is going to uh, bring back to life the bones, the skeletons? وَهِيَ رَمِيمٌ And it's like dust and flying away. قُلْ يُحْيِيهَا الَّذِي أَنْشَأَهَا أَوَّلَ مَرَّةً Say, O Rasul, O Prophet of Allah, that يُحْيِيهَا that these عظام and these bones will be resurrected and brought back to life by the one who initially created them. And so, Allah Azza wa Jal, He created us initially from nothing and surely, uh, surely Allah Azza wa Jal, when He creates us once again for a second time, will be, it should be easier. Nothing's difficult for Allah, but it's, you know, once the thing that's been done first is surely the most difficult time. And so if Allah could do it the first time, He can surely do it again. Ayahsawul insan. Does a person think, Allah that will never gather his bones, that he will just decay, and, you know, or for those who are cremated, that he will just be dust, for those who are eaten by a wild animal, or etc., and their body is scattered, and whatever the case, do you really think, the point being is, do you really think, do we really think that Allah Azza wa Jal will not resurrect us? Let's think about that for a minute. Why would Allah make us in this amazing form for no reason? We spoke about this last time as well, that there has to be a greater purpose for our creation, not for our existence. And so for someone to imagine, or for an atheist, or anyone to imagine, or someone who's agnostic, or no one that's having doubts about the deen, to imagine that, okay, so we're here, and we're like, you know, mashallah, we're so, no, they wouldn't say mashallah, but that we're, so, we're such an amazing creature, some, such an amazing being. We talk, we walk, we understand. You know, we have relationships, we have friendships, we have love, we care. You know, we, we have generosity, and etc. All of these amazing features that Allah has made all of his creatures with, you know, could it be just for no reason? Why would Allah do that? Why would this amazing creator create all of this for no reason? It doesn't make sense, or it doesn't, uh, it's not consistent with the amazing being that Allah is. That Allah Azza wa Jalla is so amazingly the fashioner, and yet he did this for no reason. And so for someone to assume that all of this is for no reason, is more of a silly suggestion or is in fact a silly suggestion or is in fact this silly argument that this is all for no reason did you really think or do you really think that Allah made us for no reason it doesn't it can't be we wouldn't we in our limited wisdom and, 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 and intellect that Allah has given us even we wouldn't do something so amazing for no reason who would make an amazing monument or something like the Taj Mahal, or construct the pyramids, or make a beautiful masjid, or you know, all of these beautiful things and structures out there in the world, or who would make even a good phone for no reason? Yeah? Would Steve Jobs, for example, for those who like Apple, make Apple for no reason just for it to be just to go to waste? Would Samsung, right? Did the makers did the maker of Taj Mahal make it for no reason? No, there was purpose and reason behind each and every single one of these. And so Allah being the ultimately wise and ultimately, you know, uh, uh, ultimately knowledgeable and ultimately just and fair and, and amazing and, inter and with perfect in all of his uh, characters and features and, and qualities, he wouldn't do this for no reason. And so for us to think, do you really think Allah is not going to recreate you or question you or resurrect you or bring you to justice? No, that's a very silly thought. Bala. Rather, nay, qadirin ala an nusawiya banana. We are qadirin. We have the ability. Allah is saying, Bala, why can we not do so? Bala, while we are able to reset even the uh, fingertips perfectly. The ayah, uh, this ayah is talking about, so if Allah, you know, Bala qadirin, no. If you think that Allah is not going to resurrect you or recollect, recollect your bones, then no. But rather, Allah will is able to recreate you the first time, and He can recreate you the second time. Allah is recreate you, able to recreate you a million times if He wanted to. And as that will be the case for those who are in Jahannam, that their, you know, the julud and their skins will burn away, but Allah will continually recycle it for it to 
for the punishment to be complete. وَالْعِيَاذُ بِاللَّهِ May Allah keep us all safe from that. Any sort of even a moment in Jahannam is too much. So Allah, may Allah make us, uh, keep us safe from Jahannam uh, completely and give us entry into Jannah uh, from the very beginning. Amin ya Rabbil Alameen. بَلَا قَادِرِينَ عَلَىٰ نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَ Allah is able to definitely resurrect us once again. He, he can resurrect our bodies even to the fingertips and the fingernails and to the minutest detail Allah Azza wa Jal عَلَىٰ أَن نُسَوِّيَ بَنَانَ بَلْ يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ لِيَفْجُرْ أَمَامًا Rather, يُرِيدُ الْإِنسَانُ أَرَادَ يُرِيدُ It means wanting. So the insan, of course, is us, human being. The insan wants لِيَفْجُرْ أَمَامًا Human being, rather, instead of being considerate or thinking about the qiyamah which is coming and Allah Azza wa Jal will recollect our bones and recreate us and you know, resurrect us and etc. and etc. You know, he wants to amama. He wants to carry on messing around. A human being would want to disobey Allah even before the day of Qiyamah. And as we know that the Qiyamah will only be established upon the worst of Allah's creation, the worst of human beings. The Muslims and the Mu'mins will pass away before that. And when, it's that, when the, 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 the people that will be alive at the time of Qiyamah, they would have seen all of these major signs of Qiyamah. Can you imagine someone seeing the major, major signs of Qiyamah? Someone saw the sun rising from the west and they know that it's the Prophet ﷺ has prophesied this and yet they will continue to disbelieve. Someone will see a fire that will chase people from Yemen all the way to Asham and they will still be reluctant to believe. Someone will see... Uh, an anim- a beast speaking to people and they will still not want to believe. Someone will see the jal and he will see that the jal being killed and yet people would have known that this has happened and they will still deny. People will see, people will see the Mahdi, they will see the jal, they will see Isa ibn Maryam, they will see the Ya'juj and Ma'juj who are and will come out, who will come out. Uh, even though there are some theories out there and you know many respectable scholars have perhaps said that or given favor to that opinion but the ajuj and ma'juj are actual beings that Allah Azza wa Jal will allow for them to be released as is clearly indicated by you know the Quran and the Sunnah and they will come and they will travel throughout the world and they will see this they will hear of this and then they will still not want to believe the major signs of Qiyamah people will see they will see the great fires they will see uh, the great earthquakes, they will see the sun rising from the west, the fire, all of these things that we said, they will see them. And yet, people, so this means that a person who's not willing to believe will not want to believe, even if you were to give the sun or the moon in their hand. That's what, that's what, that's what it's about. Even if Allah Azza wa Jal was to, even if someone was to see Qiyamah and then given a life once again, if you weren't to believe, you would not believe. As for the believers, they will believe anyway, because the attitude of disbelief is a problematic one. The attitude of doubt, of questioning everything, of disrespect, these attitudes are problematic which make a problem, which make a person fall into the traps of of shaitan. And so a human being will want to do fujur and liyafjura amama even before the qiyamah. Yes'alu ayyana yawmul qiyamah. They will say, or he says, when is qiyamah going to happen? Denying it and doubting it completely. As if they haven't seen enough miracles. The mushrikeen who are asking these questions at the time, they saw the living miracle of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They saw and, and witnessed the living miracle of the Qur'an as we do today. They saw and heard of, you know, iqtarabat al-sa'atu wa al qamar and the splitting of the moon. They saw plants responding to the call of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They saw stones giving salam to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They saw the prophecies of the Prophet becoming true again and again. And yet they were not willing to believe. Rather, they were in complete doubt. When is Qiyamah going to happen? And so therefore, the attitude of the disbelievers are problematic. In fact, if we want our attitudes to be correct and for us to be guided by the Quran, it's indicated and taught to us at the very beginning. That this is a guidance for those who want to sincerely attain taqwa. You must approach the Quran with humility and humbleness. And that's one of the, you know, the Mufassirun say that's one of the reasons why Allah says Alif Lam Mim as the first letters of Surah Al-Baqarah. Because 
It's, these are letters of the Arabic language and yet the most knowledgeable of Arabs couldn't understand what that actually means Meaning, come and see these letters which are from your tongue, from your language and yet you cannot understand what they mean Meaning, humble yourself in front of the Quran Approach it with a neutral mind Humble yourself in front of Allah Azza wa Jal and his, and, his, and his kalam and his miracles so that perhaps you may be guided and so therefore يَسْأَلُ أَيَّانَ يَوْمُ الْقِيَامَةِ To continually ask, when is Qiyamah? Like the man, the Badwi said to the Prophet ﷺ, when is Qiyamah? Prophet ﷺ said very simply, what did you prepare for it? That you want to ask about Qiyamah, what did you prepare for it? That's our question. That's what's really important to us. Right? I'll give you an example, right? It's like a man um, who's gone to the train station, okay? And every few minutes he's asking everyone, um, when's the train? When's the train? When's the train coming? And they're like, don't worry, it's still 10 minutes. It's still 7 minutes. But he doesn't even have a ticket to go onto the train or money to go onto the train. What's the point of him asking about when the train is? This is a silly question. Why do you want to know when the train is if, you, if you're not going to get onto it? Or you don't have the money to get onto it? Or you don't have the ticket to get onto it? And so, when is Qiyamah? When is Qiyamah? What's your point to ask about Qiyamah? What have you prepared for it? That's what's the real question. What have we prepared for Yawm Al-Qiyamah? فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرِ Allah Azza wa Jal says, the Qiyamah is the day on which the eyes will be dazzled. That Bariq al Basar, the eyes will be fearful. They will be in a state of terror. And Allah Azza wa describes the Qiyam over there in Surah Ibrahim. Where Allah says that the eyes will be, you know, مُقْنِعِي رُؤُسِهِمْ لَا يَرْتَدُّ إِلَيْهِمْ طَرْفُهُمْ They will not be able to... Uh, their, their glances and their eyesight will become completely fearful and, and full of terror. فَإِذَا بَرِقَ الْبَصَرُ وَخَسَفَ الْقَمَرُ And the light of the moon goes away. Meaning... Meaning that the... وَجُمِعَ الشَّمْسُ وَالْقَمَرُ You know? Allah says in the next ayah that Allah Azza wa Jalla will, will, will cause the, the, the shams and the qamar to collide and to crash and their lights will go away. And if the shams and the qamar collide and they both disappear, then what happens? You have no light left because the sun is the main source of light and the, the moon is reflecting that light. And so therefore, they will, the, night, the, 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 the night and the day will both become completely dark. And so these are all describing how the qiyamah will start. Qiyamah will start as, you know, in another surahs we've learnt that the Qiyamah will start off, of course, with the signs, the minor signs that build up to it and the major signs that build up to it. And when the day of Qiyamah actually happens, there will be a blowing, an actual blowing of into the trumpet by Sayyidina Israfil alayhi salatu wasalam, who was, who is one of the great angels, you know, Jibreel, Mikael, and uh, Jibril or Jibrail or Jabrail, these are different pronunciation, Mikael or Mikal and Israfil, and Malakul Maut, which according to some of us, his name is Azrael also. So they, they, these are the main angels. Israfil alayhi salatu was salam, as the Prophet has taught us. Now imagine this Israfil alayhi salatu was salam, we've been told that he's already taken the trumpet into his mouth and he is gazing and waiting. For his commandment to come to blow And he has not taken a break or looked away Yet in case he misses that command for a millisecond That's how obedient the angels are And so uh, that's how close the Qiyamah is It's imminent, it can happen any moment Obviously the signs will happen But all of this time It's how fast, how slow and etc you know, as we know that towards the end of time, the time will become very close to it and it will be very fast. And so, there will be a crash between the, uh, so the, the blowing of the trumpet, everything will be destroyed. You know, a hadith teaches a man will be spreading his cloth out to, to sell it and he won't be able to sell it and he will, he will die before then. The, 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 the trumpet will be blown. A man will hear the sound of a, a person will hear a sound of a trumpet and he will look towards that direction and he will be dead by the time they look. And so the Qiyamah is going to be very swift and very abrupt when it does happen. So the, the trumpet will be blown and there will be a gap in between the two trumpets. Uh, some ulama say three trumpets, three blowing into the trumpets and they have the adilla for that. Uh, uh, some say it's two and perhaps the two opinion is a stronger opinion uh, as indicated by various adilla. Again, we don't want to get into all of that for now. But there is the first blowing and then the second blowing and the second blowing will be the time, will be the blowing of 
being recreated and resurrected for Qiyamah. So Wajumi Ashamsu al Qamar and all of that, you know, the destruction of the world and and you know Wasuyurat al Jibalu Fakanat Saraba and etc. All everything will be destroyed. That's all from the first blowing of the trumpet when everything will be killed, everything will be dead on the world in the world from the animals, from the human beings, from the jinn and everyone. The insan will say on that day, where is our, where can we run to? We can't go anywhere because Qiyamah will be an open field and there, will be, there won't be any uh, walls to hide from or hide behind or any person to go to or any home to, because any, if you want to hide, right, you've got to go somewhere. Where are you going to go on Yawm Al-Qiyamah? There's nowhere to go. It's all a plain field. Plain, you know, as described, a plain silver, flat field of openness with nothing, and the sun is just above, and Allah Azza wa Jalla is just, you know, in, is in front of you, and the malaika all around. Jahannam is brought forth. You can see it. You can see people's deeds are apparent from the amount of sweating and and bleeding they're doing on the field of Qiyamah. Where are you going to go to? Forget running from Allah, you can't even run away from the person who's got a haq over you. If you've harmed someone in this dunya, they will be able to find you. Allah will give them the ability to find you on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. They will be able to call you out even if you're a mile away. They will see you and they will call you and bring you to justice. They will sue you for your crimes. And so therefore, Ain al mafar where can we go to? There is no running. You know, people will wish they were dust, but they can't be because Allah Azza wa Jalla is decreed. Allah says then, rather, nay, you know, um, never, uh, there will be no refuge at all. No, where are you going to go to? Allah is there. There's no death. You can't even kill yourself to die. There's no escape whatsoever. Can you imagine how terrifying this Yawm Al-Qiyamah will be? And, and then we realize it's not a surprise why Allah is warning us about it so many times. So many surahs named after Qiyamah, so many ayat talking about Qiyamah, so many names for Qiyamah, so many ahadith about Qiyamah, so many signs leading you up to Qiyamah. Minor signs that we have seen from the signs of them is the passing of the Prophet himself. All of these is a warning that Qiyamah is close. Don't ask when it is, prepare for it because it's very close. Is get your bags together right now for Yawm Al-Qiyamah because it's that close. There's no running on Yawm Al-Qiyamah. So this is a reminder to myself first and to all of us that we should prepare for our deaths and ultimately our death is our Qiyamah. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَ إِذِنِ الْمُسْتَقَرُ On that day towards your Lord will be your destination. You can't go anywhere apart from to Allah. Where are you going to go to? Like I said, there's no mountains. It's all a flat surface. Who are you going to go to? Who's going to give you protection? No one can give you any protection except for by the permission of Allah if the Prophet ﷺ is allowed to do shafa'a for you and a pious friend, a pious alim, a pious and etc. Certain, ex- certain ex- exceptions for shafa'a, mainly for the Prophet ﷺ. But however, there is no running from Allah Even that shafa'a will be by the permission of Allah. إِلَىٰ رَبِّكَ يَوْمَئِذٍ الْمُسْتَقَرُ يُنَبَّأُ الْإِنسَانُ يَوْمَئِذٍ بِمَا قَدَّمَ وَأَخَرُ On that day, an insan, a person will be told and informed of what he sent forth and what he left behind, of his good deeds, good and bad deeds, what he done in this world for the Akhirah. Allah says that rather man will be a witness against himself. You know, you will be informed about what you've done. There will be your kitab and your, your hisab and everything. However, you will be a good enough witness against yourself because you will know. You know, Allah says, Kafa bi nafsika liyoma alayka hasiba. It is enough for you to do your own calculation on that day because you will be seeing all of your good deeds, all of your good and bad deeds. So, you know, but insanu yoma idin bi maqadda mawakhar. Bali al insanu ala nafsihi basira. A person is very much well aware of his good deeds or his bad deeds. My dear friends, my sisters and my brothers, our deeds will be calculated and counted and weighed. No doubt whatsoever. Okay? And that's why the ulama, they say that it's very important of your spiritual growth to do something called muhasaba, muhasabatun nafs. And this is a topic that's very, very important. And we've spoken about it before in our khutbas as well. We must do muhasabatun nafs. Calculation of oneself. 
when you need to, we need to zoom into ourselves because only we know our deeds right of course allah knows but from the human beings no one knows your deeds better than yourself and so it's really important to put yourself in front of yourself once a day once a week regularly once every few hours if you can but this process should be an essential part of a person's life muhasabatun nafs you must calculate yourself if you more for just for a moment just think for yourself what have i done today you know and i remember this is we used to listen to nasheed when we were kids by Dawood Wansby Ali say what did i do today it's a very beautiful nasheed but it's so such a beautiful such a beautiful meaning and i still love those nasheeds and i still do you know what did i do today did, did i remember the words of al-fatiha did i take time to thank you for all that i have he, used to, he would say uh, did I call on you to guide my way? And he carries on, did, what did I do today? And he says a lot of other things. But it's really important to calculate yourself. We do this for all of our different types of successes. For our worldly success, we have our you know, annual, exam, annual examinations. For, our, for, for, for the health of our cars, we have our MOT tests. For our de- teeth, we have our dentist checks. And how about my deeds and my situation with my Lord for the Akhirah? I need to check myself. And if you check yourself and be absolutely honest to yourself about what we've done, we'll realize that our actions are so minimal. So minimal. What have I done? Allah has given me 24 hours in a day. From that, I'm supposed to pray five salahs, which probably would have taken slowly if you were to do it properly, right? You know, maybe an hour at mac- maximum. Much less than that, realistically. And in that hour that I prayed, even that hour, or say 30 minutes that I used to pray, maybe even a fraction of that was actually focusing on what I was doing. Maybe even 10%. And the rest of the day, I'm just doing my own things. I'm not, maybe I'm not even intending for it to be ibadah, or I'm not making the right intentions to make it into ibadah. Because we know that if you make good intention for, your, for every action, you can make it into ibadah. If you make the intention that I'm earning my, my, my income for, to feed my family for the sake of Allah, then that's, that's ibadah, of course. And everything can be turned into ibadah. And as for the things that we're actually supposed to be doing as ibadah, even that is hollow, isn't it? Let's check ourselves. Let's ask ourselves this question. And it's so important to do this because otherwise, you'll come to you at the end of your life and you realize, I've, I've not actually done anything. I'm, I'm, I'm useless. Where, where am I? You know, you'll have all these crises. We'll have all these crises. The midlife crisis and etc. Um, and so, therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, my dear brothers and sisters, viewers and listeners, right? We need to check ourselves regularly. We know about what we do. Let's calculate our good deeds. Let's make a plan from there. Not a plan. Even, even plan maybe sounds like a bit too much. But let's have a hope that you know, on a, from ten percent of focus in my bed, I want to make it 20, 30, 100 percent eventually, and then I want to increase in those. Number of the Zarakat. May Allah enable me first and all of us. Amin. Rabbil Alameen. Walau al Allah says, even if you are giving your own excuses, you know your good deeds or you know your deeds by yourself better than anybody else. And so a person will be knowing, they'll know their deeds on Yawm al Qiyamah. Even if he's giving excuses, Allah, you know, this, 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 this. Nope. Nope. It's like the person has got arrested. He'll be like, oh, Fisa, I'm sorry, X, Y, and Z. But really, you know whether you are speeding to go home because you had a reason or you are speeding because you were just in the mood for it. Or why you did any sort of, you know, um, any, any of these uh, things which are, which are not right. And so therefore, calculation of ourselves. Hasibu qabla an tuhasabu. Calculate your own good deeds before you are calculated yourself in front of Allah Azza wa Jal. But the insan ala nafsihi basira. You know, مَالِ هَذَا الْكِتَابِ We will say on يوم, يوم القيامة People will say on القيامة What's this book? لَا يُغَادِرُ صَغِيرَةً وَلَا كَبِيرَةً إِلَّا أَحْصَى There isn't any small or big deed Except that it's completely noted it down Clearly Allahu Akbar It's something to be very careful about, my dear friends Inshallah Let's do this Let's calculate our good deeds Let's prepare for this day يَوْمُ الرَّحِيلِ Wallahi, that's the only reality Look at this, look at this world that we live in right now So much uncertainty We, we, you know, we would have thought that you know, 2020 would have been a year of certainty And everything would have been mapped and planned and clear cut It was the most, you know It still is the most uncertain year in my life 
You know, I can say, and I think in, in the lives of almost everyone that's alive right now in this world, we would have never imagined the things that we're seeing nowadays. You know, it would have been blasphemous to even imagine the Kaaba is going to be closed, or meaning the Hajj being closed and Umrah being closed for such a long time. So. And so the reality is, the only true reality is that Allah Azza wa has given us to this life for a temporary time to, to gather some goods for the Akhirah. Right? We don't go to a train station while we're waiting for the train and we start building a, you know, a wall there, a house there. We're just waiting for a train, even if it's for, even if someone's in the train station for 10 hours, you don't, you're not going to see him setting up a tent or setting up a camp and setting up a kitchen and trying to look for a job in the train station, you know, asking the, uh, the station master, can I have a cleaning job for the next two hours while I'm here? You know, we, we are travelers. We are travelers. And so let's prepare for this ultimate journey that's ahead of us. That's, that's, the, wallahi, that's the only reality. And we know that. Anyone that's watching this, we know that. The real, the only truth and reality of this life is this death and qiyamah and etc. And so let's prepare inshallah azza wa jal. With this, we'll practice this ayat together and then we'll end the lesson. I will give you a chance to repeat after me if you wish to do so. بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا أقسم بيوم القيامة ولا أقسم بالنفس اللوامة أيحسب الإنسان أن لن نجمع عظامه بلى قادرين على أن نسوي بنانه بل يريد الإنسان ليفجر أمامه يسأل أيان يوم القيامة فإذا برق البصر وخسف القمر وجمع الشمس والقمر يقول الإنسان يومئذ أين المفر كلا لا وزر إلى ربك يومئذ المستقر ينبأ الإنسان يومئذ بما قدم وأخر بل الإنسان على نفسه بصيرة ولو ألقى معاذيرة صدق الله العظيم سبحانك اللهم أشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت استغفرك وأتوب إليك والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته